until we stop insinuating that there is something wrong with individuals who are gay, lesbian, transgender, bisexual, or queer, we are complicit in their harm. Well, it is Pride Month. You want to listen to this woman who, one, should not be in the pulpit, but two, listen to what she's espousing. And it's not just women, though she shouldn't be in the pulpit, but it's not just women that are espous that espousing this stuff. But there are those that are just friends with the world and want those that are in the world that are comfortable with being of the world to be comfortable being in the world. Till we stop insinuating that there is something wrong with individuals who are gay, lesbian, transgender, bisexual, or queer, we are complicit in their harm. We give license when we create a category of others. When we herald that there is any hierarchy of human worth, we contradict our own teaching and we then contribute to the harm. Human understandings of power often think of power as hierarchical, with those representing patriarchy at the top and everyone else beneath them. She has missed the whole point of the Bible. She has missed the whole point of God. There's order. There is rank. There is hierarchy. There is a God who is above all. Christ is the head of the church. And then we have headship and leadership. And so there is a bit of a hierarchy. Not that there's anyone who's better than the next person, just because there's a person who is the boss or the supervisor on a job site or an office, doesn't mean that that person is better, but there is hierarchy. That person is entrusted and responsible for the leading of the people underneath them, but it make the person better. Similarly, we do have a guide when it comes to the scripture and she has missed all of it. So let's deal with what she said. Till we stop insinuating that there is something wrong with individuals who are gay, lesbian, transgender, bisexual, or queer, we are complicit in their harm. First off, there is something wrong with those things. And if you're going to be a, now if you're not a Christian, fine, you don't believe those things. But if you are a Christian, then you should believe those things because the reason why you are a Christian is because of the book. And when you open the book, you'll find things that tell you that those things are wrong. As a matter of fact, Paul says so about the people says professing to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the incorruptible for an image in the form of corruptible. And he goes on and talks about what they are doing. Men, for this reason, gave them to the over to their great degrading passions for their women exchanged the natural function of which is unnatural. And in the same way, also men abandoned the natural function of the woman burned in their desire for one another, men with men committing indecent acts and receiving in their own person the due penalty of the errors. So we're not um, we're, we're wrong for not telling. As a matter of fact, Paul says, am I your enemy because I'm telling you the truth? No. Your friend, someone that look, that's looking out for you, would tell you the truth. If you're going the wrong way you, and you're going to find yourself in a whole heap of trouble, don't you want someone to warn you? Don't you want someone to warn you if you're headed towards a life-altering danger? Some people are so caught up and satisfied in it that they don't want to be told that, but that's not a you problem. That's a them problem, and we are to warn them. As a matter of fact, it's not a new thing. The Bible says this in uh, Proverbs 27, 5, better is open rebuke than that that is concealed. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but deceitful are the kisses of enemy. If I just kiss you and tell you that everything is all right, I'm not being your friend. As a matter of fact, that same writing in Romans 1, we'll look at it later, that those that do those things or even give consent to others or approval to those things, they're also in danger. We give license when we create a category of others. Now, no, we don't give license to anything. Uh, people want to sin because they want to sin. That's who they are. But going back to this, what he says, listen to what he says. Uh, creating a category of others. Notice how, the, notice the pronouns are there. Professing to be wise, they became fools. Now, the they is embedded in the becoming fools, but it's God that calls them they. He seems to separate them as they or others. Therefore, God gave them over to the lust of their hearts. So God is the one that's distinguishing the others from those who have not turned their back on him, who has who have dishonored him. So this is God. I mean, this is the Lord that's doing these things, creating a category of others. Others, either you're with us or you're not. Either you're his or you're not. If you're not his, you're part of the others. When we herald that there is any hierarchy of human worth, we contradict our own teaching and we then contribute to the harm. 
Human understandings of power often think of power as hierarchical, with those representing patriarchy at the top and everyone else beneath them. Now she goes on to talk about how we contradict our own teaching. All she's trying to do is just placate and pander to the people that are on their way to hell. The Bible is clear because this is not going to contract, contradict the teaching of the scriptures. We're going to just read what the scripture says. And although they know the ordinances of God, this person has a Bible she can read, that those who practice such things are worthy of death. They not only do the same, but also give hearty approval to those who practice them. We should warn people. But again, it's Pride Month and you're going to hear more and more people because, again, it's Pride Month. They're going to talk about what they have pride in, in sin, in lawlessness, in being degraded. And what has God done? He's going to leave many of them in the position. He's going to pass over them, uh, leave them in a reprobated state. And so you have no one else to blame but yourself because you have taken part, taken joy in your sin and didn't want anyone to help you. Now, shame on the person who is getting in the way of help because there are people that have preached the gospel to people in these different lifestyles and have left. But could you imagine those people that are experiencing joy and on their way to heaven? Could you imagine if she would have gotten her way and would have stopped the person from preaching and telling them what sin is? That's a person that's not your friend. That's a person that's worthy of hell. I hate to say it. I hope she repents. But if she doesn't, it's not my rules. It's his. And she's going to find out what true patriarchy is. She's going to find out what true hierarchy is. That is that God is in control. He sets the rules. And if you don't follow them on this earth, fine. At some point in time, your knee will bow, your tongue will confess, and that will be that. And I pray it didn't have to come to that. I pray that they and she and others will listen to the word of God. Amen. Amen.